Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be another editing tutorial where we're going to take some footage from my Insta360 X3 camera, 360 stuff, and we're going to edit it in the desktop studio app on our computer. And I'm not going to edit, edit this video too much. I want to keep it fairly uncut. I'm going to walk through fairly slowly of all the features inside the desktop studio to give you a bit of an insight into what every single feature does. So you can follow along at the same pace if you want to. You can get to know all the features and you can put together 360 videos like mine too. So I'm gonna hop over to my screen and we'll get stuck into this. And just before I forget, you can go and download my video settings cheat sheet right here, or so the link will be in the description. And this is a little chart of all my favorite settings for an Insta360 camera and the GoPro camera. All you do is simply look at it look at where you're shooting and what activity you're doing and then plug in the settings. So I know settings are a minefield and real confusing for people. So you can go and grab that. That will clear up all the confusion. Right, back to the editing tutorial. So we'll open up Insta360 Studio and it'll look like this. And then we're gonna drag in our footage, which I've already got here. Drag it straight in. You can connect your camera to your computer and do it that way, but the actual app then asks you to import all the footage, which I don't really like doing. I just like to in, in, um, input just the files that I want to work with, just for simplicity, really. So what we'll do is I'll just get rid of all this to start with. I was doing a bit of playing around with this before. Right. So this is what the studio will look like when you import your footage for the first time. And this is a this is about a minute long clip of me on a chairlift in Italy, which is kind of cool. And obviously we can click and drag around on the screen. I'm just using my tracking pad here on a MacBook. And we can have a look around and see where our footage is. The first things first, we want to decide where this video is going to be shared because that's going to affect our aspect ratio and the, the dimensions of our video. So at the minute this is set to nine by 16 here, as we can see. You may wanna change that depending on where you wanna share your footage. If you're creating a video for say a YouTube channel, I would recommend changing it to 16 by nine, which is like this. And then vice versa, you can do one by one, four by three, but nine by 16 is what I generally use for social media stuff. <clears throat> So I'm gonna keep it at that for now. But just choose what aspect ratio that you want um, to the output video to be, and we can edit this afterwards. So, first things first, the bottom here is our timeline. And what I like to do before I do any keyframing or editing, I like to trim my clip. Because there's very, it's very unlikely I'm gonna use a whole minute and 20 seconds of footage a 360 footage in a video. So what I like to do is trim the clip. And all I'm doing here is dragging this end here to where I want it. Or you can use these two buttons here, which is the <coughs> mark as the trim start and mark as trim end. So you can play your footage just using the space bar. Let's just skim through it and drag this player head through. <coughs> Let's say we're gonna start there. I'm gonna click this, mark as trim start. And then we wanna play it again, and we want to find our end points. Let's just say we want a, about a 15 second clip to work with around here. And then we click this one. And this is our workable space of our clip here. You see here we can play through it, move around. Cool. So, Let's talk about all the different buttons and features we have inside this app. And Insta360 is a very simple studio to use. <clears throat> so it's not very confusing at all. You basically have these buttons here. And we have a keyframing button, deep track, time shift, and motion blur. And obviously we can zoom in and out on our timeline. So first of all, let's have a look at keyframing. So I'll show you the easy way first, and then I'll show you the more advanced way. So the easy way is using deep track. 
and all we do is click this button here and it says here please drag with the left mouse button and select the tracking target or click the automatic identified tracking target so look it's already identified the targets in the video and what we can do is simply click that <clears throat> and it will track our subject through the video <clears throat> I need to get a glass of water, really. <laughs> Coughing a little bit. And you'll see there, it's tracking our subject. And we can play that back and I'll show you, look, it, it focuses on my friend John. All the way through the clip. And this is great if you want to focus on one thing in your video. But if, for example, you want to have the camera move around and look at different things, this isn't the best option. So what we do, is I'm going to remove that deep track for now and we're going to keyframe so let's just put a keyframe our very first point plus this plus button and it brings up this box and this is you'll see all these numbers move in a second this is I'm just using my tracking pad now moving around and these are all the degrees and angles of where your camera is currently positioned use two fingers on a tracking pad, zoom in and out. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can really fine tune your clip and you can pull in and out here, in and out, rotate, roll, do all sorts with it. So get creative and have a play with that. Then we have these four buttons up here. We've got default, which is what I'm using now. Crystal ball, tiny planet, so that's kind of a funny one that people like to use. I don't really like using that at all, but you can have a play with that. You can zoom. You know, I'll show you how to do the tiny plant in a second, actually. And then natural view. So that's kind of like the view you would want to choose if you didn't want any lens distortion. <clears throat> we'll go back to default view. And we'll pick our target there. And then what we want to do is we want to select our second keyframe. So I'm just gonna go through the footage and just show you. Let's just pause it here, put another keyframe, and then we're gonna spin the camera around, we're gonna look up the mountain, here. And what you'll notice, uh, notice here, it's put a yellow line between the two keyframes. And what this will do now is, as the video is playing, the camera will pan round and follow this line. So it'll move from keyframe one to keyframe two across this time span. So if, you, if I play it back now, I'll show you. It's very slow, it's very unanimated. What we can do is we can click this, the transition line here, and we can have a play with all these different effects. So. Have a play around with these because these actually affect how your transition moves from keyframe to keyframe. As you'll see here, let's play back. You'll see there's very subtle differences as to how the camera moves, depending on what effect you want in your video. And we can obviously move this keyframe, we can click and drag this keyframe closer so then it will move faster between the two. Let's have a play around with that. What we can also do, we can use this time shift button. We mark our key frame at the start. Let's just go here. Let's go time shift. And let's speed up the time shift in the middle. Motion blur is on for two times speed in the world, the effect will be applied after exporting. Okay, so motion blur then gets enabled automatically. Now, if you want faster motion blur, <clears throat> you won't see it on here when you're editing. You'll only see it when you export your video later on. So don't panic if you don't see motion blur. It will be applied once you export the video. Let's play this now. So it should speed up through the transition. There we go. That's cool. And if we click the time shift, this is our speed here, so we can increase this up to 64 times, which is ridiculous. Um, so it doesn't look like much on here, but 
when you export that, there'll be a nice smooth motion blur with your footage. And you can toggle that on and off if you don't want motion blur. It's quite a cool effect though. So that's the two methods that I use quite a lot for keyframing, deep track, and then actual marking as a keyframe. I'll show you another method now, which is like a tiny planet, which a lot of people quite like. So what we'll do is we'll put a keyframe here and we'll mark this tiny planet and we'll put another keyframe here. Yeah, let's go quite close actually here and we'll go tiny planet and we'll mark those both as tiny planets. On the first keyframe though, we're going to zoom right in. We'll zoom right, oh, let's feel the view control is what we want. So drag that all the way in. You may have to play around with this. That's probably the hardest bit about this software, just getting used to the, the controls and the shortcuts. Again, zoom all the way in. Let's start our first clip there. And then our second tiny planet clip, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna zoom really far out. I don't want too much, I don't want that black line on this, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And again, you can play around with this, there's infinite possibilities of this. All right, let's play this now and see what happens. I actually don't know what's gonna happen. So, you can see there what happened. We can pull the keyframe tighter. Let's, let's zoom in on, on our timeline a bit so we can make some more minor adjustments. Let's pull this in. Now this should move quite fast. Boom. And then we can add another keyframe. And we could, we could zoom it all the way back in. Let's, let's go all the way back in. Let's see what happens now. Let's so can zoom out. So I should have kept the keyframe out there longer. Again, you can play around with this and you can get so creative. But those are the main uses of the uh, studio. There's a lot of people have been asking about how to use the studio for doing other edits and things like that, and like putting an actual video together. This is not what the studio is for. The studio is mainly for reframing your 360 footage. And then once you export your footage, which I'll show you how to do now, you then open that video in another editing platform like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro to do your edits and make a video, okay? So when we're exporting, once you're happy with your clip, um, there's all these buttons down the side here, which I wouldn't really adjust at all. You can play around with stabilization. Again, these are all set in the camera, so I, th I think they're fairly good. Stitching, you're not going to notice that. Unless you use a sticky guard, you may want to turn that on, but I don't have a guard on my lens. Or a dive case, underwater and above water. Again, we're shooting in the mountains, so we don't need that. I'd leave stitching optimization alone. Media processing, so you can play around a little bit with color grading here, so you'll notice that these options here will adjust your footage slightly, but I prefer to do my color grading and color enhancement after I've done all this in another, in another software. We can do noise reduction and voice focus here. So voice focus will focus more on your voice, obviously, and noise reduction will try and remove some of the unnecessary wind noise from your footage, which is kind of useful, I guess. Logo settings, I don't really know why you'd want to include in 360's logo on here, but if you want to, you can. I just set none. And then you can organize your projects here. So you can create a new project, you can add files to it, just for easier navigation of your files. <clears throat> and then we have the file properties, if you were interested in that. So when we are ready to upload, our, sorry, export our video, we want to just click here, this yellow button, start export. And don't worry, it's not gonna export just yet. What I would recommend you do is create a preset. So every time you come in and you create a similar video, 
you have all these settings ready to go and you don't have to input these settings every single time. And we can edit this and we can save this and you can then play around with the settings and save that. Um, bit rate, I probably wouldn't go above 100, you can go to 200 but you can see the file size at the bottom there, how much that adjusts and increases. If you're planning on uploading this to social media straight away, then 50, even 40 um, on the bitrate scale is enough. Um, social media will crush your videos through compression, so it's almost a fine balance trying to figure out what um, bit bitrate to use that doesn't crush your videos and uploads in the highest quality. Resolution. This will just automatically be set to what aspect ratio you set your video to. So 1080 by 1920 is uh, 9 by 16, like a social media post. And then encoding format, if you want the highest, highest quality footage, then ProRes 422 is the one you want. But you'll notice the file size like doubles even, like, it goes up a lot. H.264 I find is the one to go for. It's just kind of like a good middle ground. And then you simply click start export and you'll see here the software will do its thing. You'll get a progress bar at the bottom and you'll get a progress bar here. And then once it's finished, you'll hear a noise letting you know it's completed. There we go. Done. And that's literally it. And then your video is ready to upload or to edit, whatever you want to do with it. So that is a tutorial in ins 360 studio app i hope this was useful and I hope it was a good pace that you understood what was going on i know sometimes on youtube like these people go very very fast and it's hard to understand so i want to slow things down so you could easily understand this and just a reminder if you want all my video settings for the ins 360 x3 as well as other action cameras like a gopro there'll be a link in the description below and a picture on the screen here of where you can go and get that it's just basically a chart of all my favorite video settings for all different types of shooting environments and lighting situations. So you just literally look at where you are shooting and what lighting conditions and what you are filming and then plug those settings in. And there's no confusion, It'll set you up ready to take some great 360 footage. Any questions on what I've talked about in this video, pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. And hopefully this was useful to you.